we exalt your name on high. We give honor and glory unto you for you alone are worthy of all the honor and all the praise that is due in our lives. Father, we thank you for everything that you have put before us, Father God, and we thank you for every individual that you put around us, Father. We thank you for the things that you've done and the things that you're getting ready to do. We magnify your name and we glorify you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Word of the Lamb Ministries welcomes you to Sunday message. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we thank God for each and every one of you. And we ask you right now, God, that you look upon each and every individual on the line. Amen. And we thank God for those who have tuned in to us uh, that were on Facebook or was just looking at us through watching the little lambs. Amen. Glory to God as they were talking about Juneteenth. Amen. Glory to God, a celebration that has been marked wonderfully. Amen. Glory to God. And I am. Um, I want to, uh, I have a message, amen, and I want to get that message in and out of the way. Glory to God, amen, glory to God, in the name of Jesus, and I need to make sure that everybody is right because we're live and direct to each and every one. Good morning to all those who are on the conference line. Good morning to those that are on Zoom and those that are on Facebook, amen, glory to God. We bless your holy name. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning to all. Amen. And for, I just want to get the announcements in and out of the way. Amen. As we um, approach, approach this situation. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Good day. Good day. Good day to all of the word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries across the globe. We are the official church without walls, feeding your faith and doubt will starve. We welcome you this wonderful day that the Lord has made, and we will be glad in it. And we'd like to invite each and every one of you to our many services. We have Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Bible study. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have prayer where we will pray for you and with you. Every other Wednesday, we have a fun, fantastic book club for the hours and the book that we're reading and the dates and times, please go to our website at www.wordofthelamb.org. That is wordofthelamb.org. And every Friday for Friday, Encouraging Word at 7 p.m., where many times we have guest speakers and Bible trivia. You never know what's going to happen on Friday, Encouraging Word, but you're always guaranteed a good time in God. So come on out and don't be a part of the I should have been there crowd. Every first Saturday of the month, we have first fruit prayer between the hours of 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. noon in the afternoon, 12 noon and 1 p.m. First fruit Saturday, every first Saturday, giving God the first fruit of all that we have. And every Sunday, you guess it, right here, live on Facebook, Zoom, and other social media with Pastor Brian at 11 a.m., bringing the word of God to the people of God. And every Sunday at 10 a.m., we have Children's Church, our own little lambs, God's little lamb learning about the lamb of God, 10 a.m. Children's Church. And we also have prayer. Monday through Friday called Unity Prayer. That is at 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m., where we are praying for global community. Won't you join us? And we have a women's ministry. That's International Ladies of Distinction and a men's ministry, Brothers with Knowledge, BWK. And we welcome questions, inquiries, church membership, or if you just want to know what must I do to be saved, please communicate with us and we will get back with you expeditiously. You can contact us at our email address. That is wordofthelamb at outlook.com. Wordofthelamb at outlook.com. 
And we would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone around the United States and in Latin America for your generous giving and partnering with Word of the Lamb to spread the gospel throughout all four corners of the world. You will see on your screen, at the bottom of your screen, a text to give button, and we thank you in advance. You will also see on our website, www.wordofthelamb.org, a donate here button. And we thank you for allowing us and partnering with us to spread the good news everywhere. Thank you. You are part of the kingdom and we are one body of Christ. And at this time, we are going to translate these messages to our friends in Latin America. Gracias por estar con nosotros y bienvenidos a Word of the Land Worldwide Ministries, la iglesia oficial sin paredes, dándole a comer a tu fe y no dándole a comer a tu duda. Nosotros tenemos muchos servicios, tenemos lunes, estudios bíblicos, martes y jueves tenemos oración, en donde oramos con usted y por usted. Los miércoles tenemos un club de libros que pueden estar con nosotros, nosotros leemos un libro en comunidad y estamos en el libro eh, y para las horas del libro que nosotros estamos leyendo pueden ir a nuestra página www.word.org y ahí pueden encontrar el libro y toda la información para los miércoles. También tenemos los Viernes, viernes, palabra de apoyo a las 7 de la noche, en donde estamos muchas veces tenemos diferentes predicadores y también tenemos juegos bíblicos. Uno nunca sabe lo que va a suceder el viernes, palabra de apoyo, pero todos estamos garantizados un buen tiempo en la palabra de Dios. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Y el sábado, el primer sábado del mes, tenemos oración, fruto de oración, dándole a Dios el primer fruto de todo lo que tenemos. Y eso es entre las 12 de la tarde y la una de la tarde. Y los domingos, todos los domingos, aquí en vivo, en Facebook y en Zoom y en todas nuestras otras pantallas, estamos en vivo con la palabra general, con nuestro pastor, Pastor Brian dándole palabra a las personas de la palabra de Dios para la gente de Dios. Y a las 10 de la mañana tenemos para nuestros pequeñas ovejitas de Dios, tenemos estudios los domingos a las 10 para los niños. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Y ahí en su pantalla van a ver el text to give. Y le damos las gracias antemano por parejar con nosotros mundialmente para poner la palabra y echar la palabra para adelante en todo el mundo. Gracias. Y también en nuestra página hay un botón de donación. Gracias. Y también tenemos oración de lunes a viernes, a las 6 de la mañana, a las 12 del día y a las 6 de la noche. De lunes a viernes tenemos oración, unidad de oración. Estamos poniendo la palabra en oración. Ven con nosotros, estamos orando por la comunidad global del mundo. Gracias por estar con nosotros y les apoyamos que siga en la palabra de Dios y que Dios los bendiga y les fortalezca. We will turn over this now to our own beloved Pastor Brian and we will give a shout out to all of those June babies and we're thanking God that he has moved in a mighty way, making Juneteenth a federal holiday, long time coming. So we're still taking kingdom territory. And now for the most awesome part of these announcements, the word of God to strengthen us during the week. We thank you once again. And we turn this over to our own beloved Pastor Brian. Of the land worldwide dash Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Black meeting information on Facebook on mute. Currently on YouTube. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Hallelujah for all the things that you've done, all the things that you're doing. Good morning, each and every individual on this line today. Amen. All those that are on the conference line and all those that are on Facebook and uh 
then Zoom, of course, amen, glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. First and foremost, I wanna start off by uh, saying to all the fathers out there and even the people who stepped in the father's roles, happy Father's Day to each and every one of you, amen. And um, I hope that, that you are having an enjoyable and joyful time, amen, glory to God. Just being, you know, able to spend time with your families and friends. I also wanna uh, thank, uh, for, thank for the wonderful presentation, Deaconess Anita and Deacon Steve and, all those that have put their minds and souls into into uh, this Juneteenth celebration, Amen. Glory to God, and I hope that uh, you prospered and did something worthwhile. You know, um, to some people, it's a brand new celebration. For people like myself, it's not brand new. It's been something celebrated quite a long time um and i'm very very overwhelmed that they're now into a federal holiday and you know it means so much in so many ways along with so many other things that we're being i believe that's to be the uh i believe it to be the um beginning of many other things amen Glory to God. Now, how many of y'all know that there's a word from God? Now, the word mm -hmm, that God has given me is a little different than this. You know, there's a lot of people talking about Father's Day and the fathers, and, and they're talking about quite a few other things, amen, of that nature. And that's the theme that most people have. And a lot of things of that nature. Um, unfortunately, that's not what God led me today. And amen, glory to God. Amen. So buckle your seat belts. Amen, glory to God, as they say. And, uh, you know, try to try your best to, to stay, stay with me. Amen, glory to God. But I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna start like this. Father God, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for everything that you have done and everything that you're getting ready to do. We magnify your name, we glorify your name, we exalt your name on high, Father. We know that through you all things are possible, Father God. We know that you are the Alpha and the Omega. You know that you are the beginning and the end, Father. Father, I know that I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I give honor to God and Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. To every Christian saint, every XM, every apostle, bishop, pastor, prophet, teacher, pastors, prophets, teachers, ushers, evangelists, and just lay people. I would die as regarding intellectual integrity, I stand before you, matter of fact, I sit before you, hallelujah, to expound and share with you the Rama of the Logo meaning the written and spoken word of God. I, I, I'm feeling quite good today. Amen. You might hear a slight tiredness in the voice. Amen. But that's because, you know, God has been dealing with me because I didn't want to bring this message that I have, amen, in a certain way. And but you know, you always know for those that that are, have bring forth the word that you got to do what God say do. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So for those who are out there in this world, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you're you you know we 
We appreciate you. Glory to God. But we're going to do what God say do. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to say Amen. good morning to, to Sister Miller and Sister Shaylin. Amen. Glory to God. To Evangelist Lady Sunshine, Evangelist Outlaw, Evangelist folks, Evangelist all over this world. I want to thank God for the deacon, deaconess, you know, the chapelle and amen. And amen, glory to God. And even for Sister uh, Brianna for being here, amen, glory to God with us. And Sister Bridget, amen, glory to God this morning. We thank you all for being with us, amen. Glory to God. I have a title this morning, amen. Glory to God. And it's a little different, amen, glory to God, than it was before. I, it, you know, and like I said before, a lot of people are talking about uh, fatherhood and uh, Father's Day and amen and, and giving glory to God and hallelujah. And that's what we should be doing because we're going to do it anyway. But I want to talk to the people, hallelujah, that don't know. For those that are a little different, amen, the ones who are out there doing something amen and my title for today is warning amen warning you see uh th th this is this is what god gave to me that this is a warning to those who are playing with god see there's some people out there in this world who are out here on the cusp of saying that they're with God, but they're only using it in name only. Amen. This is a warning to those people. This is a warning to those who run their mouth on the people of God. Amen. This is a warning for you for you see because the lord wants you to be in a certain place and he's giving you a warning so that you can give yourself an opportunity or a chance and an an object amen of uh not being able to do or say what god wants you to do amen glory to god hallelujah thank you jesus this is a warning to what he wants to do for you Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is a warning because God wants to do something special in your life. Amen. That he hasn't done before. And amen. He wants to move you in a certain area. Glory to God. And he wants to bring you into a certain place amen glory to god are you with me see the bible tells us in james 1 and 26 hallelujah if anyone thinks ah uh, come on i'm reading from the english standard version i want you to be able to to, to be able to, to be there amen glory to god hallelujah thank you jesus Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that if anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, that person's religion is worthless. Question, are you worthy or are you worthless? See, this is a warning for those who run their mouth. See, the Bible tells us that in Ephesians 4 and 29, let no corruptible talk come out of your mouth. Let me repeat that little part again before I finish. Let no corruptible thoughts no corruptible talk 
come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasions, that it may give grace to those who hear. We have been in a world where people love to tear people down. We've been in a world where individuals don't mind yelling and screaming at someone. We live in a world where individuals love to run and, and talk about individuals. Matter of fact, they'll run and talk about you in a minute. And this is going on all throughout the world. And even though we are in the realm of, 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 of church, it goes on quite a lot in the church world. See, but you've been warned right now that these situations shouldn't be. You've been warned because the Lord has allowed me to give you examples of what you shouldn't do. Now it's not up to me to make you do it. It's up to me to show you what you shouldn't do. You've been warned in a certain way about how things are done. Proverbs 1, 13 and 3 says, whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. How many of us have been guarding our mouths? Or how many of us are quick to run to talk about something that's gossipy. Or oh, I'm gonna tie this into a whole lot of things here today, but I'm going to allow what God has given me to be brought forth because somebody needs to know this, amen. I might not be talking to anybody on this line. I might not be talking to anybody on Zoom. I might not be talking to anybody on Facebook, but there's somebody who's gonna run across this that's gonna get an understanding that you've been warned. It says in Proverbs 13 and three, whoever, whoso, whoever guards his mouth preserves his life and he who opens wide his lips becomes to ruin. Question. How are you smiling in the face of a person and talking behind their back? Hmm. Have you ever done that? Have you ever been the victim? Have you ever walked by and know that people were talking about you? Yeah, I'm sure you have. Have you ever been the person who was doing the talking? Might have been there too. But you've been warned. Are you one of those people who never take a side? You lean on whatever side is more pop, pop, popular? Is that you? Is that you? Is that you? Is it me? See, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 6, the 16th chapter, 6, 6th chapter, 16th through the 19th verse. I'm reading from the English Standard Version, y'all. Yeah. There are six things that the Lord hates. Seven that are abomination to him. Honey eyes, a lying tongue, and a hand that shed innocent blood. 
a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who soars discord among the brothers. Warning. Are you only here to get what you can? And when you have sucked out the anointing that you needed, you move on. There are people who are only around you because they're attracted to the anointing like a moth to the flame. And yes, they're there because the attraction of the anointing is pulling them, which is one thing we hope to do. But they're just trying to feed off of your anointing without doing anything else. For those people, will run to you when your anointing is replenished. These people will run to you when your anointing level is at a different place. For those people, I want to tell you something right now. Warning. See, the Lord is about to change you into whatever he wants you to be. And before you know it, see, there's not any possibility of you grabbing all that anointing, sucking up from each one, and God doesn't change you inside your heart. You might think that you're not changing but before you know it, you've changed. He'll change you into what he wants you to be. And before you know it, he'll do it. Or he has already done it. But you can't hang around a good person and something not rub off. You can't hang around a good person and something not rubbed off. For the people of God, the, the people who you're hanging around with, there's something about you that's rubbing off on them because of not only the anointing, but the, the, the knowledge and wisdom that God has poured into you to give to the individuals that are around you. There's something about you that's rubbing off on them. It might be the tiniest little thing. But it's rubbing off on them. Maybe they didn't used to pray a lot. And now they're praying more. Maybe they didn't even read their Bible. But now they're starting to read some more. Maybe they didn't have questions about the Lord. But now they're questioning some things because they want to know. Something about you is rubbing off on them. Warning. If you hang around the people of God too much, you might find yourself saved. Warning. If you hang around the people of God enough, you might find yourself giving a glory shout. Warning, if you hang around the people of God long enough, your habits might just drop. Warning, if you hang around the people of God long enough, that better part of you that's selfish will drop away. You see, the Bible tells us in Snook, the sixth chapter and the 45th verse, once again, I'm still in the English Standard Version. The good pe person 
out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. What are you speaking about? Are you speaking about the goodness of the Lord? Come on now. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my very soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Now I ask this question to you. What are you speaking about? Who are you speaking to? And for those that are speaking, are you speaking against someone? Have you ran your mouth against the people of God? Warning. There are those who are trying to divide the people of God. Those are those who are trying to put a monkey wrench, as they say, into your plans with God. There are those who whisper in your ear and tell you all the things that you can't or should, or maybe it might be okay to do. But if you ever notice nine times out of 10, the people who are trying to get you to do something different are not in church. Why are they trying to get you to go someplace or get out of some place they haven't stepped their foot in? Or if they're in there, they're only there to visit. They're not there to do anything else. Warning. There are people who go to church just to say they went to church for the prestige of telling somebody that place that they've been. But haven't allowed anything or anyone to change their attitude, their way, or their thought. Are you one of those people? The Bible tells you in Romans, the 16th chapter and the 17th verse, I appeal to you, brethren, to watch out for those who cause division and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. The Bible tells you to avoid them. There are a lot of people in this world who want to give you a whole lot of things but want to put you in a place that's different than it should be. And maybe it's because you might be mad at the man or the woman of God for them and how they're speaking or preaching to you. When they're only trying to help you, but you got an attitude. So now that you got an attitude, you're gonna find somebody else who got an attitude or somebody who doesn't wanna be around you or somebody who doesn't, who doesn't want you to be there to try to get you out of some situations. And then you hear all these things and it sounds so good. It sounds so sweet until the fact that you can't know, notice the fact that you can't even get off your feet. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
excuse me, y'all. Warning. You can't be sitting there and running around two or three different ministries. People teach differently. And all of it's up and all these things that you have cause you to become confused. Pick a place and stick with it. Warning. Watch what you say and how you talk to people. And watch who you talk to and who you're talking about. Now, on the other hand, if you're being talked about, maybe it's in place to motivate you. If you're being talked about, knowing that it might not any good thing is being said about you. The Bible, if I'm not mistaken, says count it all joy. Meaning that it doesn't matter what another person has to say to you because you know what? Your word is coming from God and if he's blessing you, he's blessing you. But some of us are in a spot where we don't even want to give accountability. Warning. If you're underneath leadership and the leadership is telling you something, and you don't want to do it because you got an attitude or you don't feel that you don't want to do it. I'm going to do it my way. That's out of order. And no good thing will come to it. And for those who need to know, if you feel that strongly about any particular place that you're in where you can't hang out with the leadership, then it's time for you to go. Because maybe that's not the place for you, or maybe you might be doing harm to the ministry. Warning, God don't like that. Ephesians, the fourth chapter and the 29th verse. Oh, come on. I'm not going to be here with y'all long. Let no corruption talk come out of your mouth, but only, I said this again. I'm repeating it again. I said it earlier, so I'm saying it again. But only such as a good for building up as it fits the occasion that it may be given grace to those who hear. You've been warned. There are two choices, change or don't change. Choose you this day, what you're going to do. See, cause if you don't change, just stay where you are in your same scenario and be wherever it is that you're doing. But the moment that you said, I'm going to change, you got to drop some stuff. You got to stretch somewhere. You got to move a little bit more. You got to move some things out the way and you got to get yourself extra committed to what God has for you. The thing is that some of y'all are waiting to hear from God and God is talking to the leadership to you and you don't want to hear it. Yeah, I know this ain't no that message that's going to do something. Somebody say, ouch, or I'm the man, or somebody say, amen, whichever one you want to say, glory to God. I know that I'm getting some things, amen, glory to God. Warning. Some of you are doing something totally different right now. 
you don't have a thought, you're listening to what is being said, but your mind is on so many other things that is not on the God. And if this is on God, it's not on this message right here. You're on your own particular term, doing your own thing and warning you're missing the boat. Some of you are doing so many things that you can't even tell me what the message is going to be about or what the message was about. Warning. You can't live a certain lifestyle and then claim to be in love with God. We all know that we all love God. But by showing him our love, we have to change some things. We can't run around being a certain way. And if you got people in your life trying to get you to run in a different direction that's not of God, and you keep conforming to it, then who are you listening to? Because obviously, you're not listening to the word of God. Warning. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. Warning. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. Mammon or God? Joshua. The 24th chapter, the 15th verse, the King James Version. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your father served, which were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There is a warning that God has before you, that he does not want any of you lost but he wants you to be able to get an understanding that as his heavenly father, it's his duty to come and tell you about something that might not be right in your life. If you want it to be a happy Father's Day, then you should listen to the warnings that God has put before you and turn yourself around and tell the father exactly what it is that you love about him and what you're going to do to change your ways and I choose and what you're going to choose. If you're going to choose to be with the father, then there's some things in our whole life, it will matter who you are, that has to change. Whether you are working on them or you're not working on them. And if we're working on them and you still haven't changed, then it's time to work a little bit harder. I want y'all to get an understanding of something. God's been warning us all our lives. He's been warning us from the beginning of time. He warned Adam and Eve. He's warning the people of Israel. He warned the people of God. He even sent a warning before it rained, before it flooded. He sent a warning to the people of Solomon and Gomorrah. He sent a warning to the men and women of God all over this world. He sent a warning to us through 
the books of the Bible and he sent a warning for our future through revelations. In all of the warnings that he has sent you, he has made it so that there's still time to turn back to God. There's a time to do just that. For they say that there's a, it's a, it's a time in a season, it's the time in a season to turn to God. There's senseless killings, there's people being hurt, there's people out of work, there's people being stricken by diseases known and unknown. Things are happening all around this world. And yet, all these things are happening, and we did not or have not, at least some of us have, but some of us have not, turn to God and ask God, Lord, help me in my situation. Or better yet, help me in my unbelief. You've been warned. that God is not going to have this anymore. Times of half-stepping is over. The times for being disobedient is over. You have a choice of two things, heaven or hell, choose wisely. You've been warned. For those that are on this line and you said to yourself, I've heard the warning and I'm tired of being in a place that I'm at. And I need to know Jesus for myself. And I need to know him better than I think I know him. Oh, glory, someone help me. I need to get a better understanding of who he is to me. That he loved me so much that not only that he gave a warning, but he gave his only begotten son. And he said that he who would ever believe in him would have everlasting life. You see, we serve that kind of God who loves you so much that he wants to give you a second chances to get it right. Some of us did not breathe the breath of life this morning. But for those who breathe the breath of life this morning, he gave you a second chance to be able to come up and get an understanding of him and allow him to move and work in your heart. Jesus says, I'm here. He says, I'm right here. He says, I'm right here with my arms open wide. There's a song that says, Jesus says, here I am. Won't you please take my hand? And you said to him, tomorrow. I'm asking you right now that tomorrow might be too late. But for those who want to know Jesus for themselves, who want to build the love of him, who want to understand him, who said, I want to be saved, I want to be sanctified, I don't want to go to hell, but I want to go to heaven. 
Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? For those that are on the line and you're desiring to want to be saved, amen. Glory to God, even if you're on Zoom, if you're on Facebook, amen. Glory to God, there's a number that you can call one 302-202-1110. Use 940-792. Call that number. We'll be on the line. And we surely uh, bring you through. We can't save you, but we can walk you through the aspect of being saved. Only Jesus can save you. I can't get you into heaven but I can give you the opportunities and all the tools to get you there. And then you will have to take the walk for yourself. This is an individual thing. I don't care what everybody else has to say. I don't care if you're in a crowd of unbelievers, but if you're feeling in your spirit right now and you're saying to myself, I thought to be saved, then come and be saved. No one else can make that decision for you. Only you can. But I guarantee it will change your life. I guarantee it will change your life. For those who have been saved and they've dropped the ball, they've not taken the opportunity to do everything that they wanted to do. And some of us have stepped away and moved back and decided that we'll go and do some secular stuff in this world. For those who know the Lord but have not put the effort into knowing him as well. I'm asking you that wherever you are, that you will take the opportunity to pray this prayer with me. Ah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. And for those that need to know, hallelujah, you can still call us on 1-302-202-1110 and use 940-792. And we will not only help you bring you through, that is even for those who desire to be praise and prayers. Amen. Glory to God. We will pray you through. But for those who have dropped the ball, pray with me right now. Father God, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I have fallen short. I have moved away. I have stepped to the side, Father. Or I just plain stopped. Lord, I'm asking that you forgive me right now in the name of Jesus. I repent right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you that you will forgive me of what I've done and try me one more time. I'm asking you, Father God, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, that you'll move in every area of our lives. Now, Father, I ask you to have your way in and out of seasons. I'm asking you that you'll change our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our spirit. And Father, I'm asking you that you'll move in areas that need to be moved. Lord, have your way. 
change my thoughts and minds and hearts and souls from the way that I used to be to a new way, Father God, where you are the center of my life, Father God. I stretch my arms and my heart towards you. Lord Jesus, thank you. Forgive me and keep me in the head, in palms of your hand, in the bosom of your heart. And I ask, Father God, that you give me the wisdom and understanding to move the way you have desired and wanted me to. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. For those amen. who have prayed this prayer, hallelujah, we welcome you back in with a warning. The warning is this. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let individuals stop you from coming to Christ. Whether it's popular or is unpopular, it is no one else's soul but yours. The Bible says that when the accusers of Mary weren't there anymore, Jesus asked where they were. And he says, go and sin no more. He told the man that was sitting by the pool, that once he was made whole, he said, go and sin no more. Stay with God, I'm paraphrasing y'all. See, because there's a difference between it. Warning for those who have raised their voices and talked about people, tell the Lord you sorry and don't do it no more. Some of us, as soon as we get off of here, are going to do the opposite of what I just told you to do. When you start to get that feeling, you need to turn around and say, depart from me, Satan, for you are an offense to me. Get behind me, Satan, for you are an offense to me. If you have desires to be a member of this church, or if your desire to be on watch from this church. Feel free to look upon our website and read what we believe in. For I say this for every church that you go to that you should always know what they believe in before you desire to wanna to be a member or want to be under watch for that particular ministry. And if you have read the things that are online, wordofthelamb.org, and you have found out that you like what it is that we believe in, and you're interested in being a member, would you come, would you come, would you come? Father, 
I did what you asked me to do. I brought forth an invitation. I pray for those who have stepped out of bounds. I opened up the doors, Father, for those who desire to come. I thank you, Father, and I ask you that you bless us in all ways possible. Now, Father, I ask you that you look upon the people, Father, each and every one of them, Father. Father, that they will hear with their ears the warnings that you have put before them, Father God, by the scriptures that you have given me, Father. That they will be able to look each and every one of them up, Father, and get an understanding of what God you have poured upon them, Father, that you want them to be warned against, Father. Father, I ask you that you increase their prayer life, Father, that you increase their reading, Father, that they will, you will increase their communication with you, Father. I ask you that you will be a shield around them, a buckler around them, Father, that Jesus, you will be their offensive weapon, the word of God that it will be strengthened through them, Father. Lord, that you will hold them in the palm of their hands. Father, I, I ask you that you even look upon the ones who think that they need to get right to get to church. And Father, let them know that that's an excuse. That you come as you are and allow God to use you in a special way. And if you allow him to come into your heart, he'll love the hell out of you. Warning, if you spend a long time with God, he'll love you even more. Warning, the more that you spend with the Lord, the more understanding he'll give you. Warning, the more that you take the time to get to know the Lord Jesus, the more you'll realize that you're a changed person. Warning, will things that used to make you mad, used to make you upset, when you're in the will and the understanding of Christ, they don't even matter. Warning, the love of God over and supersedes everything that you have in your life. Warning, if you let him in, he'll change your life forever. And with that being said, amen, amen, and amen. I wish each and every one Amen. of you a blessed day. Amen. For every father and father, mother, father, sister, father, brother, father, uncle, father, and all those who are in that fatherish role. I ask you and wish you a happy Father's Day. I thank God for every particular thing. Because if it wasn't for the God, our Father in heaven, we would not even be here. Amen. Glory to God. For he, he took the opportunity and looked upon Jesus in the Holy Ghost and said, let us make man in our own image. Amen. That you'll get an understanding. But it also came with a warning. He said, I love you so much but don't eat from this tree. Let us not be hard headed as we always been, but let us listen to the words that God has and let them penetrate our heart. 
let them supersede the things that we want to do and listen to the things that God wants us to do. In Jesus' name, I pray for each and every one of you. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you to Brother Eli and Sister Bridget and Sister Morales and Sister Miller. God bless you to Deacon Steve and Deacon Sunita, to Evangelist Outlaw, Evangelist Lady Sunshine, Evangelist Hooks. God bless the little lambs, Zoe and the Chappelle kids, amen. God bless you, Sister Brianna, amen, glory to God. And all those who are represented here in every area, those who I see and the ones I don't see. Glory to God. It's been a beautiful weekend, a celebration of things to come. And this is just one of many things that we will be doing. Let the Lord use you in everything that you do. And there are times when the people push you to the point where they want you to come out of your character. Show them who you belong to. Show them whose father you belong to. I ask that you continue to bless me and be with me. I hope you continue to pray for me as I pray for you, for those that are on the line. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to say this as plainly as I can. For those that are on Facebook and for those that are on Zoom or on the conference line, we will have the conference line open. If you're desiring prayer, the number is one 302-202-1110 and use the code 940792. Once again, that number is 1302-202-1110. Use the code 940792 and we will be on the conference line, amen, for at least about a good 20 or 30 minutes to see if you would like to have prayer. We would love for you to do this because we'll be here in prayer for you. Amen. Glory to God. We open it up for you to be that way. For everyone else that is on Facebook, we, got, we thank God for each and every one of you and ask you that you continue to be blessed in all ways possible. We ask that you continue to overflow in your area and whatever you do, do it in the name of God and do it right and give, give him glory in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you all.